What's up, everybody? We're back again. It's episode 308 of the Dad by Golf Pod, and we're recording live from bunkers here in Auburn. Uh, it's Kyle and Ben, That's me. and we are ready to have a blast. Tonight's episode is brought to you by Bet Online, the number one sports betting website in the country. Sign up today, get a 50% welcome bonus. Use coupon code BLEAV, B L E A V. Give them 100 bucks, they're going to give you 50 back on top to play with. Um, you got the big game coming up Saturday, Sunday, college basketball, right in the thick of it. Uh, all kind of stuff you can bet on there. They even have an online casino. Yeah. Ben's done a lot of damage there. <laughs> Check it out. Uh, bet online. It's where the game starts. So, again, we're recording live from Bunkers. We have so much to talk about uh, about Bunkers. Look, Sunday, Super Bowl, I'm sorry, the big game, whatever you want to call it, it's a Super Bowl party. It's a Super Bowl. We're not making any money off yeah, of it. We're not as, long, as long as you're not making money off of it, you can say the name. Yeah, it's a Super Bowl party, but not only that, it's the sign-up party for the Winter League. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be, a, uh, you're going to have door prizes, you're going to get your tee time set up, uh, what days you kind of want to uh, play your matches, uh, not your matches, your nine hole, uh, your nine hole, scramble. I guess, scramble yeah. rounds. Uh, you'll sign up for all that. Uh, it's going to be an absolute blast. All the simulators are going to be, uh, they're going to have the Super Bowl on. It's going to be absolutely incredible. But the big thing uh, is this whole bullet bourbon and beer deal they're going to have going on starting on Sunday. I'm going to let Ben sort of take over from here. So what this is, is they're going to have a pair. So you see this flight right here. You can get this anytime after Sunday where you can get, you see there's four holes. So they're going to give you two bourbons, two bullet bourbons, and two beers they're going to pair with it. They paired with this one with the regular bourbon. They've been New Realm, which is an Auburn beer, actually. The, the Auburn University uh, beer. Right here, it's a uh, an IPA, hazy like a fox IPA. So let Kyle try, and while the foam settles, you get your bourbon, and that is what you'll try. Start with that's the regular bourbon, not the rye. Makes my chest burn. <laughs> Puts hair on your chest. That's yeah. what it does. And then you take it down with the. Uh, and then you pair it with the new realm. The new realm beer. That's good stuff. Oh, that's awesome. And then they also have the bullet rye that you would pair with the truck stop, truck stop honey brown ale. So oh, you're gonna go ahead and do that? Yeah, go ahead. So this is the, you got the rye. I didn't bring another cup for the uh, for the truck stop honey. Go ahead and you chase make it. do. Go ahead and chase it down. So this is going to be available. This is what you're going to be able to sample and stuff. That those size shots in the in the glass in the beer, you'll be able to sample those for the Super Bowl party uh, sign up party. It's going to be a blast. Here's the cool thing: Friday night, free concert, 8:30. Blaine Rudd. Oh, I didn't know that. It's going to be here. Uh, there's no cover, no anything. This whole area that we're gonna that we're in is going to be like rearranged to be sort of like a concert hall. So that's Friday night, 8:30. Uh, and then you got your usuals. You got your Sunday brunch, 11 to 3 on Sunday. Kids play free. They also have it 11 to 3 on Saturday, but kids don't play free. That's only on Sunday. And then, so you got Super Bowl uh, party and the sign up for the Winter League on Sunday. And then the following week is when this bad boy kicks off. Me and Ben are going to be ready. We're not going to have dress shoes on. We're going to come in. We may bring our own clubs. Y'all may make fun of us. We're going to come in. We're going to have blasts. It's it's going to be uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So. Check, uh, check them out online, Bunkers uh, at Auburn, uh, and they got all the uh, events and things like that. You can also follow them on social media and follow us on social media. We'll keep you updated yep. uh, as well. All right, now let's talk some golf. So, pretty big weekend yeah. uh, in golf in general. You had your uh, your first elevated event uh, on the PGA Tour, Yes, Pebble Beach, which was spectacular. And I want to get into that a little bit because we'll I'm, I'm a little – a little pissed about the elevated event deal. Still, yeah, we're still, still mad about that. Yeah. And then you had Liv kicked off its season with a bang at uh, the, the the golf course in My Cove. My one, Cove, yeah. one that's got the cave in the middle of the the, the green that everybody uh, not the green the uh, the fairway. The fairway where it looks like everybody's gonna die when they go to that hole. Yeah, and it was <laughs> it was 
pretty good golf. The, the, we got cheated a little bit at Pebble Beach because the weather got terrible on Sunday. So they cut, it was a 54 hole event, which was pretty funny, a 54 hole no cut event. That gets world ranking points. And not only that, they played lift, clean, and place in the fairway. Uh, if not the whole week. Friday least, and Saturday. Thursday least, they did not. Because the rain came in on them on, on Thursday. And so it was not wet enough yet. But yeah, Friday and Saturday was lift, clean, place. So we're going to go. I want to talk uh, Pebble Beach first because something interesting happened. I think it will spur a conversation okay. that I want to have. Okay. So Saturday's round, Wyndham Clark. It's live, live clean in place, shoots a 60, and it's the course record. So the question is, should it count as the course record? It's preferred lies. I don't know what the 61 was shot at. I don't know the conditions it was shot at. It wasn't live clean in place. They brought that up during okay. the broadcast. So Randall was very upset that they counted it. Uh, what do you think? It counts. It counts for the day. I'm kind of with Randall a little bit on the overall counting because it would be a lift clean in place. I said for the day, Randall acted like it shouldn't have counted. You should have an asterisk. And the reason being is because the other 60s are 61s. There's, I think they said three 61s have been fired in competition play that are up there. Uh, a couple of current golfers own those in the, that were in the field. And I forgot who they were, but they owned them in the field. And he got a 60. Well, theirs were not lift clean in place. And his was, so I get what Brandon's saying, but you still, they all played by the same rules that day and nobody else shot a 60. And matter of fact, I think the closest one was 63. So he was three shots better than every other guy. And this is an elevated event. So it's all the good playing players at this time. Only the top 80 are making it into that. So, well, except for, that's a whole nother story. Uh, the some, of the exemptions. some of the exemptions it got in where one guy was ranked over 240 and another guy 250. Uh, however, they didn't finish last like somebody else did. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so I get what Brandel's saying. Do you still have to count in some regards? Yes. I don't know if you golf is all about labeling crap anyway. So go ahead and say course record 60, left clean in place. Put it on the. I wouldn't care if I scored. If I went out there and I shot 60 at Pebble. And they put it in the clubhouse, 60 lift clean in place. I'm good. Here's, here's the thing. Because that's part of the rules. Here's the thing. It's lift clean in place in the fairway. Yes. Where in theory, you should have a perfect lie anyway. I think I think fairway in general should always be lift clean in place. Because you shouldn't, if you hit it in a fairway and you hit it in a divot, yeah, we've that's, had that not on, that's not on you. So yeah, absolutely it counts. Because you hit it in the, the only time you got to move it was in the fairway. So, but if, which, you, if you don't, how much does that really make you that much better? How much can you improve your lie in the fairway uh, at Pebble Beach? Jack Nicklaus used to call it lip clean and cheap. Well, he's also 100 years old. <laughs> no, he so, did that before he was 100. Whatever. <laughs> he did say, he, he now, the reason he said that is because he said he found ways when it was time to place that he could pretty much get his ball teed up. So it was definitely a better lie than what. Now, he also, because somebody brought that up to me this weekend, they said, well, you know, Jack Nicholas caught it live clean and cheap. I said, Jack Nicholas didn't play on the same conditions that these guys were playing on. Look at some of those old videos of what Pebble looked like in the 60s compared to what it looks like now. Right. With the technology and the guys that basically got freaking carpet rolled out for them. It ain't, not saying Pebble was ever at goat tracks, and don't take me, don't, don't think that I'm thinking that, but I will say, when you look at some of those old British Opens that Jack and those guys played on, you're sitting there going, bro, they could have done lift clean and play, they needed a tee in some of those places. Like they've been in, in the middle of the fairway. So, I'm on Kyle though. Count it. It's, it's in the fairway. Exactly. If it's not in a divot, and if it is in a divot, we've had that discussion before. We still think people should not be penalized for being in a daggum divot. You hit a ball 320 yards down the middle of the fairway and you get scolded for being in a divot. Meanwhile, the guy that blows it 340 right, he's on trampled down grass and has a perfect lie for the green. That's horse hockey. So, speaking I'm all about down, Speaking of did you see what Wyndham was accused of? Yes. 
where same thing that the guy the previous week was accused of over at Tory, where he would go, he would make some generous, yes. generous steps around the area where he was going to do a drop. Look, I don't care about any of that. I, I don't think there should be an asterisk. I think if you hit the fairway, you should be able to do whatever the hell yeah. you want to to the ball. It's, it, I mean, it, it, in theory, that's the perfect. That's supposed to be your perfect life. So if it's not a perfect life, that's on the course, in my opinion. Here's the it's problem. It's not on you. Here's the problem I got with the lift clean in place. People that are anti lift clean in place, they are the same people. Randall being one of them, that will say, guys should be able to clean mud balls off. And I'm like, well, that's lift clean in place. No, it's not the same. Yes, it is the same. It's literally you're lifting, you're cleaning, and then you're going to place. I mean, it. if you get to, I mean, he calls it. He said lift clean and drop. And I'm like, that, you're still in the middle of the fairway. You're yeah. still getting the clean mud off your ball, which makes all the difference in the world. Bubba Watson famously, my ball, my ball. Yeah. He does that all the time. So, I, yeah, count it. It counts. I mean, if you want to put an asterisk or you want to put a no asterisk, if you want to put a he got it with lift clean in place. No, nope. because I got to be honest with you. If that's me and my name's up there, I still point. I, I go cop. See that? Yeah, but you lift clean in place. Your name's not up there, is it? No. <laughs> I just don't see how. I just don't see how lift clean in place when it's done in the fairway can really improve you that much. I don't. No, I agree. I mean that. There are other rules. That, you and I have had this discussion. I mean, the whole, the thing they came up with about the, the buried ball that's in the rough. I'm sorry, you hit it in the rough. That should be a stroke. Like when they do that. If it's embedded? If it's embedded. Nah, I, I can't, I'm not gonna go that yeah. far. I'm pro, I'm pro the golfer. I'm, I'm pro <laughs> fairway finders. And that's because that's what I am and Kyle's not. That's yeah. why he's anti. That's true. Cause he rarely hits the fairway. Exactly, so when I hit the fairway, <laughs> I want it to be right. up on up on a tee, so I think you know. Even though nobody, and I don't hit it near as far as him, so it's always up on a tee because there's no divots where I. So am. <laughs> even though it's Wyndham Clark and nobody really cares that you know it's Wyndham Clark, you know I still think. However, he, he should be able to get. He should, yes. he should. There should be no asterisks beside his record. I say. I say it's, it's good. To and go. let's give him credit too, because you and I railed on him earlier in the year. He's, he's, not a, he's not a one hit wonder. We were like, one hit wonder, look at him. Nope. He's, he's putting up plus numbers. And then he came out and he did that. I say give it to him. Yep. To heck with you, Brandel. To heck with you, Brandel, exactly, always. All right, real quick, we got to show you these new menu items. Okay, so start off, you have a barbecue bacon cheeseburger with homemade bacon jam. And and the Parmesan fries. The fries are, are fantastic. The crunchy fries here. I'm a fried Nazi. Look at that. Look at that bacon jam. I tell people, you can ruin my meal by giving me a fry that's soggy. They're not here. You know what they are? I don't even know what bacon jam is, but I'm a huge bacon jam guy now. Right now, I just became one. This is called a barbecue burger. So check it out. Hamburger meat. Barbecue pulled pork, bacon jam on a buttery bun with Parmesan fries. There's a reason Kyle's way skinnier than me. There's a reason they call me Dad by Golf Pod. This will make you. This is absolutely friggin' delicious. Yeah. And then we've talked about their pizzas. I mean, this is like a piece of art. Like, you hate to even eat this. The, I margarita, the margarita pizza. I don't hate it. With mozzarella and tomato, uh, unbelievable thin. It's a thin crust, but soft, soft thin crust. A little basil on top. Fantastic. So, don't sleep on their pizzas here. Don't sleep on their menu. I mean, this is it's an awesome restaurant. Kyle and I have on had top the, of what was it, the honey hot chicken pizza. with Nashville pizza? Oh yeah. my goodness gracious! And this, for all you vegetarians out there, margarita pizza is vegetarian. There's no meat on it whatsoever. This is delicious. All right, so Pebble Beach in the books gets cut after 54 holes because of the weather. It's a uh, non-cut event, and it's uh, they get world ranking points. Unlike the other 54 hole event that was non-cut, non-cut that does not get world ranking points yet. Uh, Live opened their season 
uh, with the, I don't know, they call it the Mayaca, a classic or, or whatever. Uh, in, um, is it in Mexico? Yes. Uh, in Mexico. Uh, you don't mind. No, go ahead. And it was um, fireworks. Uh, fireworks just like we all thought, thought it would be. Um, it turned out to be the Spaniard tournament. That's yeah. what it was. On uh, on Saturday, there was John Rahm, Joaquin Neiman, Sergio Garcia, Brooks Kepka. Not Spanish. Uh, I think even Cam Smith were all within. Also not Spanish. All within three shots of the lead. It was unbelievable. It ended with a playoff. A four, was it four holes? It was. They kept chanting one more hole because it was getting so dark. They, they finished in the they dark. They finally finished. It was pitch dark almost. They had lights on the green, music going crazy. Some people didn't like the music. Not I, me. I, I love it. I, that's I, what, I that's think it's us cool. on the boards. It's a cool vibe. Uh, and then Joachim Neiman hits a hits a bomb. Uh, hits a bomb to uh, to beat Sergio in the Bro, playoff. That's phenomenal. Uh, the piece is unbelievable. Hits a bomb to beat Bert, uh, Sergio in the uh, in the playoff. It, I'm very. I'm going to be very curious to see the final numbers when they come out because there was no PGA golf on Sunday, and Liv was, uh, you know, roaring on Sunday. So, how did that shake out? Uh, I'll be very, very curious to see how the ratings came out. I thought there's so many people that there's so many more golf people that actually watched it that loved the fact that there was no, like hardly any commercials. Yep. You see almost every shot, uh, and it's just golf, man. It's just golf. But, and then the, the biggest complaint was maybe the music was too loud, which, you know, whatever. John Rom said that did not bother him. Really? Every one of the players were asked about the music. Every one of them listened to music when they're practicing. So they have zero issue with it. So if the players have zero issue with it, you're the old man that says they shouldn't have music on a golf course. I get that. When you're playing, if you don't want people in your group playing music, that's fine. But when the players have zero issue with it, quit telling them what they have to do. Because Rom was the one they were worried about. Because, of course, he's their $500 million baby. He's the big one. Six, I think the numbers finally came out. I think it's like 650 is what the total comes out $650 million. <laughs> oh. um, you know, quote unquote, they said 650. But um, if they don't have a problem with it, then I don't have a problem with it. And I will say this: those of you wondering about, because Kyle mentioned the numbers, I'm interested in the YouTube numbers because the Spaniards showed out. I'm curious because Sergio is loved in Spain, Rom loved in Spain. I am very curious to see what numbers come out as far as streaming numbers are concerned. Yeah. I guarantee you all of Spain was watching that event. And if they didn't, they're at least going back and replaying it. Yeah, so I know that I watched... Joaquin Neiman, same deal. Friday, the Friday round when I watched some of the early, the early uh, action, I want to say there was somewhere between fifteen and 20,000 people streaming live. Yeah. So... I know that's a weird. Friday rounds are, are weird anyway, especially considering they all start at like one or two o'clock, and then it's everybody's playing at the same time. Um, so yeah, I'm curious to see how the TV numbers can come out, the streaming numbers, all that good stuff, uh, because that Sunday flop for the PGA Tour, which was not their fault, I'm anxious to see how Liv uh, rebounded on it. But man, the golf, it's hard to argue against the golf. The Dear Liv. Do me a favor. Stop with the shotgun start. That's the biggest. I, I, so we follow various accounts, and Flushing at Golf is one of them. That's actually a pretty cool. It's a shout out to those guys. The number one complaint for the new people, because they had no golf to watch on Sunday except for live, was I'd never understood where people were on the course. It and is honestly, hard. It that's, is hard. We follow it. And he and I will text one another of which hole are they on? Because the way they list it over on the left side, they'll say four holes to go. Well, that's great, but what hole are they on? Are they on 14 and they got they got to go to 18? Or are they on one and they got to go to five? So please, if there's a fix, that's, and I know why you're doing it, I get it, 
you're wanting to speed it up. It's quicker to play the tournament when you shotgun start everybody. It's quick, and, and I get that you're putting the leaders off of one and off of 18 and off of 17, so that way they finish on seven, on 18, 17, 16, that kind of thing. I totally get that, but please, on final, I'm, I'm totally okay with shotgun start on Friday, Saturday. On your Sunday final round, Let's do a regular round of golf so people know what the hell's going on and who's finishing where, because that's a party on 18 that those guys are doing. Y'all have it set up where you literally have the ability to have 16 at Scottsdale on 18 of every live tournament that they have. Yeah. So please do that. Please, please do the, do the shotgun Friday, Saturday. Totally okay with that. Sunday, let's have a big party on 18. All right, so I'm gonna make a. I, I got. I want. I got something I want to talk about about the shotgun start. A point that I saw brought up that I actually think was very good as far as I guess uh, giving validity to why it's more impressive for World Golf Rankings to do the shotgun start. But before I want to, before I do that, I want to give a shout out to Bad Birdie Golf Apparel. I got my Bad Birdie on. Today, yes, you baby. do. That's the uh, the paint splatter. Yes. The paint Both of us have that. It's phenomenal. Yes. You uh, use coupon code DADS. Kyle didn't do it. It goes well with purple. I'm a big purple guy. Big pur I'm a big purple and pink guy having two daughters. Kyle went with gray. So, yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> DADS 15. D-A-D-S 15. Take 15% off your next order. They got hoodies, hats, polos, everything. They even got, like, pajama sets. Like, matching pajama yes. sets. And when it comes out in the su uh, summer... They'll have matching like bathing suit sets. They got everything. So uh, use coupon code DADS15 and uh, save 15% and get ready to just look good, feel good, and then play good, just like Neon said. Just like Neon said. That's on top of current sales that they got too, by the way. And the yeah. reason I know that is because spring's about to roll around here in the They're southeast. They're going to clean out. And last year, I grabbed two quarter zips. Kyle, I had to save 75% on those after I entered the code. So yeah, it's crazy. Um, be sure, like, check the sales. Your promo code and the coupon code will Should go work towards on the sale. Yeah. Yep. All right. So I teased it right before we talked about uh, Bad Birdie, but they were talking about World Golf Rankings. Okay. So, and then another thing that happened uh, World Golf Rankings plus. Uh, the, the two really low rounds that were shot. Yeah. You had Wyndham oh, Clark. Oh, that's a good point. Wyndham yeah. Clark shot the 60. Joaquin Neiman shot a 59. Uh, and could have shot, left one on the lip for 58 uh, on 18. So the point that was made. He is, dealt one earlier in the day that if he doesn't. But he did also hole out. He did. He did. He made it to. He I mean, I guess out. it works itself out. I just, I look at the neck, I'm like, man, if he hadn't dealt that ball. Yeah, well, if he hadn't hold out from 120, it wouldn't have been a yeah. But But here's here's the thing, and I, and I haven't thought about it this way, Ben. You know, they say that the shotgun start is one of the big hang-ups that keeps them from getting the world golf points, yeah. uh, world golf uh, ranking credits. But what the, the point that uh, I can't remember who, who was making it is it's harder to win in a event like that, in a shotgun start, because everybody's playing at the same time, so there is no good draw, no, yeah, bad draw. Everybody's playing in the yep. same conditions, so it's like the more, it's like the most. It's really, even though it's hard to follow, it's really the most accurate way to say the playing field is completely, yep. I completely do agree with level. That. You don't, you didn't catch the bad, uh, bad wave of weather in the afternoon. You didn't catch the easy weather in the morning. It's everybody's playing at the exact same time. Joaquin Neiman shoots a 59. Uh, I mean, and he loses world golf ranking points. He dropped in the world golf rankings. If that's That can't happen much longer. Surely they have to get that fixed. Like he shot a 59 and he's not gonna play in any majors this year. He shot a, he shot a 59 with no flip clean in place, which I know we ah. were saying a while ago that they still it didn't really count. help him. It, you know, <laughs> but the fact that he did that, and Kyle brought up a great point when we were talking, strokes gained. Yeah. Like, I don't know the details of what he gained, but I will say, was it third or fourth best gain? All right, so what is, what he's saying, strokes gained on the field. Okay, so 
This is one thing that people try to throw out whenever, you know, Bryson shot a 58 last year at, uh, at Greenbrier. He shot a 58, but he only gained like a couple of strokes on the field. So everybody no, else was shooting because 60, everybody else 61, was, 62. Because yeah. everybody else was going so low. Again, I don't know the exact numbers. Same with Pebble. He shot 60. I told you there were two other 62s. There was a couple of 64s. So he didn't. He only had a one shot lead. So yeah. he didn't gain a ton on, on the field. The field. Yeah. Everybody was shooting low. Because I, I guess because of the live clean place. Maybe there is something to that. But anyway. Um, Joachim Neiman shot a 59, and I believe it was either the third or the fourth best strokes gained on the field round since they started measuring in golf. Since they in, in, in golf, since they started measuring that stat, so it's not because people were pooping on the course. No, it was not the course. No, he was he was so much better that day than everybody. There's only three, two or three more rounds in the history of golf. Since they've been measuring stroke gain, strokes gain that were there was a wider gap on that day from the guy that went low to the guy to the next guy. And keep in mind, Mike Cobble was on tour before. It was, and so all these players have played this course. They didn't shoot a fifty nine. No, but Lucky Neiman did. I just think that's it. Just goes to show you, man. The, you know that it's not like they go over there and they just quit learning how to play golf and no. quit caring. Joaquin went over there and he started firing at pins, making a ton of birdies, and he wins in a playoff. Like they dog, they had a dog fight yep. playoff with him and Sergio Garcia. His hero, his hero. His, his it's hero. not even somebody like it's a scrub. It was Sergio Garcia. And then there was so many stars uh, that were right there yep. within the, within three or four shots. Rom actually. He was in it until 17. He hit one out of bounds on 17, I think. Yep. It was the first time he hit it in the hazard all week. And I think he hit it in the hazard on 17. Yeah, Rahm in his debut almost wins the tournament. Yeah. His team does win the tournament. He birdies his first hole yeah. of live golf. He birdies his first hole. It was fun, man. He's I, so good, man. This is probably He's the so most good. It's probably the most that I watch a live event. Yeah. Uh, probably the most I watch a live event, like, for the weekend. So... It's a really cool product. It's really different. Um, I will say this. Liv's got something going for it that PJ didn't, and I told you I'd get around to this. This elevated event stuff, you should be ashamed, PGA Tour, number one. And the reason being is because 80 players, then I read that your Pro-Am guys had to have single-digit handicaps. That means no Bill Murray. No Nick Saban. Unless they're invited. No Bill Belichick. No, they still had to have a single No, I, there was a couple of guys that had like a 10 or 11. Well, they made fun of Tom Brady because this went to him from 11 to like an 8 overnight. Well, and then he tops one. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and the fact that they all had to pay $200,000, which makes it look like you used the amateur money to help cover the elevated event. It did not have the celebrity feel. No. You didn't even really see a lot of it. Uh, no, and you you got, I mean, Justin Timberlake used to play in this thing. Jimmy Fallon used to play in it. Uh, Gary Strucker, which he was battling some legal issues. <laughs> <laughs> he was, he he got hemmed up over the yeah. weekend. He couldn't play in it. Yeah, <laughs> he, had, he, had some, he had some issues in his pocket that the police found. Uh, Carl Banks typically yeah, plays Carl it. Yeah, Carl Banks plays in it. So, <laughs> a lot of the guys that you see at that tournament at Lake Tahoe will play in this event. Not, I mean, not anymore. And, and number one, they can. It's two hundred thousand dollars to register to play. And so I know that you have sponsors. Like I know that they said some of them, like Tom Brady's brands, paid for him to play, so he didn't have to come out of pocket. Not that he was hurting for two hundred thousand. Yeah. That's like me and you forking over five bucks to play at a golf tournament. Exactly. Um, but it'd be better, man, because. We didn't see any of their shots because y'all wanted it to be an elevated event. So you didn't even, unless they did something really bad like Tom Brady topping it off the tee, then y'all showed that. But for the most part, we didn't get to see them. A lot of a lot of country music. So Jake Owen, who is uh, one of the guys that does have like an eight, he said, I'm not paying $200,000 to play in that tournament. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, it's, a joke. It's, it's an elevated event. Also an elevated event, quit splitting courses. Like you did Spyglass and then you or did and you did pebble. Or just put, put cameras at Spyglass. Well, and they flat out said, 
at Spyglass. They, even Randall said this, if you play Pebble on Friday, you have a distinct advantage to play in Pebble on Saturday. And they play the two final rounds, Saturday and Sunday, at Pebble only. So essentially, Spyglass is hurting the pros. And for an elevated event with the winner getting $3.9 million, I don't want to be hurt. Here's the thing though. Having to play that. Here's the thing though. Liv doesn't do that. They don't split Spyglass, Spyglass arguably could be the better looking course if you really. No, I don't disagree so, with that. But the thing is, they don't show any of it. No. You see, like, number one, because which is a dumb because you can't even see the fairway from the tee box. Yeah. So everybody hits the ball like way over these trees to the left. It's it's way downhill and you can't even see anything about it. And then you see like 18, yep. which is the most boring golf hole. Like you don't understand, like after you finish the first two or three holes at Spyglass, it's like, it looks like Seminole. Yeah. It's like sand dunes, the beach, everything. And they, and, and they don't show any of it. We never see any of Spyglass. And the fact that when they're putting out on Spyglass, when they show the close-up shot, you don't know where they are. And then all of a sudden they pan out and it's like, oh, they're not at Pebble. Because everybody knows the iconic yeah. Pebble 18. So when they flip over and they're like, here he is for par on 18. And they pan out and it's like, oh, he's playing Spyglass. He's not yeah. even playing Pebble. Well, I think that's because they don't show no Spyglass. Exactly, so, so. quit, just stop doing that. But you know what? Put a tournament at Spyglass. You had the perfect opportunity the week before at Torrey to play an elevated event they at They do Torrey. play both courses at Torrey, though, don't they? They play the North. They do, but still at the elevated event. I don't understand how so Spyglass, Spyglass, they're, they're, okay, here's their reason. Their reason is they go, well, we split it up because of tee times and then we get players off. Okay, well, it's a non-cut event. There's 80 players. There's 80 players on Thursday and Saturday. When you play Pebble on Saturday and Sunday, there's still 80 players. So what's your reasoning behind splitting it up? Just I don't play? know. Is it Just play one course. Is it possible that – were that was it the plan all along to play both courses? Yes. Okay. Because I was wondering no, if maybe they were trying previous to, years, when it, I know they, the, when it was a bigger field, they had three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so – They just and, cut it And I didn't two. mind that because – Thursday, you played one course. Friday, Friday, you played one course. Saturday, you played a course. Everybody played Pebble on Sunday. Gotcha. So, I didn't have a problem with that yeah. because everybody was in the same. But here, every pro admitted, if you played Pebble on Friday, you had a distinct advantage of playing on Saturday because of conditions, because of uh, where you saw pins, where you we're able to, after you put it out, see where pins may be the following I'm day. I'm not that good, though, even it matters. No, I'm not, but I mean, <laughs> pro, that makes a difference for pros. Sure, sure. Like the fact that they're, I mean, can you imagine, let's just say, you take the Masters, can you imagine if they're playing Augusta Country Club, and then the guys play at Augusta National on Friday, see where the, everybody knows where the pins are gonna be on Saturday and Sunday, so they're able to get up there and kind of go through some reads and that kind of stuff. Like, it, I think it makes a difference for that level, not us. Uh, me and Man. you, no. listen, if, if Kyle and I are playing, dear Pebble, I'm not knocking you. So if you want to give a free trip to me and Kyle for Spyglass and price. Pebble, we'll be more than happy to come out there and test this theory to see if <laughs> Kyle beats me on Saturday after we play Pebble on Friday. But I don't, when you cut the field down, you should have just cut it down to one course. And I'm sure it's come down to money. Spyglass probably paid to. It's a resort. Yeah, it's yeah, a resort. Like they they, they want to get. They want you coming to visit and play those courses, which is kind of odd because I got a buddy that goes out there and plays Pebble every year, twice a year, and he still can't get on Spyglass. So you're, I don't know why you need to promote it when you can't get on the dang thing. <laughs> so there's no need to promote it. So just stick with on elevated events, one course. That make it level for everybody because the pros clearly think that it's advantageous if you draw a pebble on Friday heading into the Saturday Sunday weekend round and I don't know the mindset behind that we're not pros we're not good I mean look at the spray chart behind us I mean clearly we're it's like graffiti yeah we're, we're not a pro does that everything's on one line not us yeah so uh, do better PGA yeah. Tour all right Ben lastly yep. We don't know. We we apparently know nothing about what's going on with Anthony Kim, because it comes out. You know he's coming back. We think it's going to be PGA Tour. It's definitely not live. And now the rumors are his first event back is going to be a live golf event. 
Yes. In early March. Yes. So we're like a month away from Anthony Kim's return. He's going to be one of the – excuse me. He's not – I don't think he's going to be on a team. But I think he's going to – they have like a couple of extra slots where it's yes. just going to be like a person in the field. He is going to play in a live golf event. And is it in – it's it's in, it's in the – Jetta, or is it not in Saudi Arabia? Well, it is. It's Saudi Arabia. It's where he's going to be playing. Yeah. And I will say this: I need a Kim Cam. They have it on the app. Live, live, exactly. Live Golf has an app now. It's a lot like the Masters app, which is the greatest yep. app, second to Chick Fil A app. Uh, send a check, Chick Fil A. Uh, known to man, you can where you can watch every single uh, shot at the Masters. Live Golf has it where you can follow every single shot from a single player at every event. So you can watch Anthony Kim do everything on the course. You can watch him throw another Chipotle out. It's pretty good too. Is it? Yeah. I don't have a Chipotle app. Chipotle app's pretty good too. I'm, a, I'm, getting, I'm closing in on a signature member at Chick-fil-A. I've been working on it. Uh, By far. Chick-fil-A, I mean, best my fast, God. Best fast food cookies you could ever. Chocolate chip cookies. Are you talking about Chick-fil-A? Yes. Look, I look. I, I, I can open up the app. I, my order is saved. It's got not only is it saved, it remembers the extra sauces I want, the extra sides that I want, the drink, the side. I just cl- I open it up. I click a button. I say, Hey, I'll be there in a few Have minutes. Have you not got the cookies yet? No, I don't. I don't. Your kids are not old enough. Look, All they got to do is have one taste of the cookies. You are so screwed because those things are like nine dollars for a six pack, and I swear I'd pay twenty five dollars for them. Well, see, I'm I'm not a big sweets guy. Yeah, but the kids are. That's what got me. The I'm not a big won. sweets guy. I'm not a big sweets guy. But I mean, I just go boom, boom, click. They know what car I'm in. I pull around, tell them I'm here. They're like, oh, it's good to see you again. Pull around, boom, I'm in and out. It could be it could be a line around the building and you'll be done in five minutes. Yes, yeah. I mean it's, it's unbelievable. So with the live app, it's, send the check. By the way, check the play. live the live golf app is very similar. Apparently, yeah. you can watch every single uh, every you single. You can't golfer. get chocolate chip cookies on the live app. They will not but, save your order, but yeah. they will save your favorite player. So, uh, so that's good. Look, Kim Kim Cam coming up in Saudi Arabia. Was it June? Was that, no, I think it's like next month. Holy moly! Look it up. Look it up real quick, and I'll and I'll stall. I'll stall. While Ben's looking that up, uh, I want to talk again about the food here at, at Bunkers. We had the the barbecue bacon burger. It's got literally pulled pork, homemade bacon jam, a, a actual hamburger, uh, all on a bun. It's unbelievable. The Parmesan fries, the freaking margarita pizzas, uh, unbelievable, unbelievable stuff here uh, at Bunkers. Don't forget to sign up for the Winter League. Uh, you got it already? March 1st through 3rd. Yeah, March 1st through 3rd. I told you, it's less than a month away. Anthony Kim is going to be back in less than a month playing in Live Golf. And listen, we're going to be potting from here on March. We're going to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> no, we're not. Never. I'll never go there, actually. I hear they're nice people. I've never actually heard that. But uh, we're we're not going to Saudi Arabia. We're gonna be here. Uh, we'll be here because that's the winter league. That's the winter league. That's <laughs> on a Monday night. So the third, uh, the fourth, rather, uh, that Monday, we should be here. Pod. We can talk about that. Oh, oh God, there's our content right there. What yes. did Anthony Kim do this weekend? Can't wait. Can't no wait. cuts. He'll be there the whole time. Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, we'll see y'all here Sunday. Uh, I'm coming. Bullet and beer. Pair them up. Get your flight. This is going to be given away as one of the prizes. Through. Yeah, closest we, we to the We talked pin. about the, the the league that we're going to be playing in, by the way, and uh, we got our scramble league that we're going to be doing. They're giving away prizes like every, every week. Yeah, every week that Long we're doing. Long drive, closest to the pin, every week. They made. They even said they may decide on like worst score, given something. So if you suck, you can still enter and you're going to win something. So <laughs> keep that in mind. Uh, head over to Bunkers, Google it. Go to Bunkers and uh, just Google Bunkers Auburn. And you, it'll pull up, and you can see where you can enter all that stuff, or come by. They love to get your information for you to come by, take a tour of the place. Uh, they all give samples as well. I mean, that's what we're doing. I mean, we're keep wanting to take this bottle home. This is like one of my favorites, but they're not going to let me. Uh, but come by we and get your samples. Run. We may just take off running <laughs> after we get done with this. But see if they check our bags when we leave. How about yeah. that? But guys, we appreciate it uh, again. Next next uh, next week we're gonna run down. Uh, we're gonna start 
uh, getting ready for the Winter League. So yep. you're going to hear a lot of talk about that. Us training, a little, we'll, we'll recap on our speed training, uh, everything that we're doing. Ben's totally not even doing it. Not even, even attempting Okay, to do it. I went to your office today, and your clubs and your speed training tools were in your office. I'm grinding, man. I'm absolutely grinding. And you can see it. You can see the fruits. So, so we'll update you on all that, and then, uh, and then a week after that, we're going to be in here grinding oh, our God. butts off with a nine man, uh, a nine hole scramble. Listen, our two partners, they're in for it. They, they got, they got some picking up to do. Yeah. Kyle and I are working on this thing every week, and I will say the simulators are a little different than playing on the course. You know why? Because I get to hit it further. Than here. <laughs> Perfect <laughs> conditions. Yeah. So uh, appreciate it, guys. Check us out. We'll be back next week uh, live from bunkers. Uh, we got a little. Uh, is that Backstreet Boys or Insane yes. going on right now? Backstreet Boys. Yeah. All right. Uh, episode 30, 308 of the Dabon Golf Pod. We're always, always. stroking. <laughs>